What's up, Cardinal fans? Mitchell Swanson. I'm here with Coach Rivers. We're in the Rusty Coles Fieldhouse talking about the game, last week's game, and this upcoming game. So, Coach, you know, congratulations on the big win against Bayside. Awesome. You know, we lost four years, or we had lost four times in a row before this. You know, how does it feel to get the first win against Bayside? Yeah, no, it was good. It was good to kind of get get over that hump. You know, I know for for all of our guys, you know, our school, uh, the community. So it was big. It was big to win. You know, uh, you know, um, we we kind of we kind of let them off the hook uh, two years in a row. Uh, and credit to them, they won the game. But um, we. Uh, we played, we played, we played well enough to win. You know, still some things to improve on, which we've tried to work on this week. Uh, but it was uh, always good to to uh, to win that first game and and throw in the fact that it was Bayside. Uh, it was uh, it made it that much more fun. Yes, sir. Um, you know, with your football career, you had to have you know kind of like a similar situation like ours. You know, losing four years in a row to Bayside, kind of cross town rivals. You know. Was there a certain team or coach during your high school, college, NFL career that you kind of had a similar situation with? Yeah, you know, a handful and some that never that I never 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 were able to uh, to defeat. Um, I think back in college, uh, never beat Maryland, uh, never beat Maryland. I lost all four years to Maryland, uh, the only ACC team that that we didn't beat in my time there. Uh, I think to the NFL. And uh, and and never beat and and it's never a one versus one deal, but never beat Tom Brady. Uh, uh, beat the Patriots, but not when Tom was out there. Um, and then you know you had some stretches though. I had some stretches where when Peyton Manning was with the Broncos, where man we just we we, we struggled, and then we overcame and and won and won a, won a big one against them. Uh, same with you know when the Chiefs got hot with Mahomes, where we just struggled, and then we won a big one against them in 2018 on on uh, Thursday night football. Uh, you know it finished 12 and four that year in, in the middle of running the playoffs. So there were there were certainly teams that were where we struggled and. And then we won big ones like we did. And then there were some, unfortunately, that uh, we never really got over the hump. Yes, sir. Um, you know, looking at the Bayside stats, you know, Gunner was 20 of 24, 83% completion rate. You know, he had 268 passing yards and two touchdowns with the longest pass being 45 yards. You know, that's a great game for sure. But, I mean, what really sticks out is the 12 first downs we had, um, which really kept the chains moving and the ball out of Bayside's hands. How do you feel your quarterback played first game of the season? Yeah, no, Gunner had a good game. He, he, he threw completions. You know, we say, uh, you know, we say, uh, you know, protect the football, run the football, and throw completions. That's kind of our three core things offensively. And uh, we didn't turn it over. Uh, we ran it for over 100 yards. Uh, we weren't as efficient in the run game as, as, as we're going to need to be moving forward, but we ran the ball well enough, and then we threw completions. But uh, Gunner had a good night. You know, anytime the quarterback plays well, it, everybody uh, contributes to that. We had no sacks. Uh, and then there's always somebody on the receiving end of all those all those receptions. So yes, uh, it was it was a good day. You mentioned the you mentioned the 12 first downs, but also the big drive was before the half to me. That was the kind of the killer. Was we went we went five minutes and 40 seconds, 95 yards, and finished with a touchdown with about 27 seconds left in the half. That made it 21 to nothing. And 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 while we knew we had to come out in the second half, we had a little lull. Uh, that to me was was kind of what finished them uh, was getting up that touchdown drive before the half. Yes, sir. You know. Tucker had uh, five catches for 86 yards and a touchdown. And, you know, Birdie Jones had eight receptions for 101 yards and a touchdown. And even Cooper Kurth had three catches, all for a first down. How do you feel the receivers played on Friday night? Yeah, I thought they played well. You know, I think it's, it's, it's you just never really know. Obviously, you, you know, uh, you know, Tucker and Brody are going to be guys we try to push the football to. There's no doubt, obviously, with what they can do with it, uh, the vertical threat they are and, and how dangerous they are after the catch. Uh, and then you just never really know, you know, how it's going to go. I, I asked Cooper Kurth, did you think you were going to catch three for 50? I mean, he didn't, yes, you know, he didn't. If you looked at the call sheet, there weren't a lot of – you wouldn't have thought he was going to get those opportunities. So you, you tell everybody you never know when it's going to be that game and, and also when there's going to be a game where it's not going to be. So it's uh, – uh, it was good. Those guys, those guys did a nice job. Marja had a couple catches out of the backfield as well. Um, I, I thought all in all, it was solid. Again, it was an efficient night. You know, there's going to be nights where we're going to need 350, and there's going to be need to be more big plays had. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be nights where we we only need 150, and we're just going to run it. You know, and yes, so uh, you, you kind of never know. I, I think that's what makes us tough to defend is how multiple we are. And certainly, there's those there's those guys in Tucker and Brody that we're pushing it to. But at the same time, uh, we want to make teams uh, you know have to defend. And defend everyone. Yes, sir. And, you know, shifting to the running back, Kamar J had four receptions for 32 yards, plus 21 attempts for 87 rushing yards. And, you know, it earned him the Wild Corner Network Player of the Week. Um, how did Kamar J have such a big game – or, like, a, have a, having a big game 
affect your game plan during the game? And did you adjust him while he was gaining yards? Yeah, the, 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 it was a real challenge, I felt like, for Kamar I mean, he spent most of the summer at corner. And um, he's gotten some running back reps, but he's really really playing well at corner. All the seven-on-seven seven is corner. And um, and due to Noah's injury, he's had to kind of be the – the uh, bell cow with, at running back, and, and and then Braden, you know, uh, has kind of gone back and forth. Actually, played a lot more wide receiver all summer. Now he's playing corner. So, you know, when you get some injuries, that's kind of what happens. You guys got to have to be willing to shuffle. Uh, Marjay's done a nice job handling that, um, and uh, hopefully he can continue to improve that. While also we hope to get Noah back, and so it's a little bit of balancing that as we go. Uh, managing the injury p- part of it, and hopefully we don't get any more because you kind of see, you know, I didn't think I didn't think we we're going to see Huck in that game the other night, yes, you sir. know, and then Russo goes down, and then it's like, man, Marjay needs a breather, mm-hmm. and then shoot, Huck got in there and ran well. So um, you, you never know when your number's going to get called. Marjay's done a nice job responding to the call of, of, of having to be kind of the every down tailback. Yes, sir. And you know, kind of shifting to the defense. How do, how do you think the defense played? Friday night against Baseline. They flew around. You know, I had multiple people tell me, you know, coaches tell me uh, that watch the game, tell me, man, the defense is flying around. They're flying to the football. And um, I think that was evident. We missed some tackles uh, that we could have had that would have really probably crushed some drives that they ended up scoring on. Um, but all in all, we really ran to the football. Um, we, we, we played we played well you know they 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 were had limited opportunities limited yards uh, they really didn't have anything in the passing game mm-hmm. um, it was a good night and uh, one we need to build on though you know I think like like we know it's one to know this week now nobody cares yes, sir. we care but I mean nobody cares about last week now let's what are you gonna do now yes sir and so that's that's the challenge is can we can we get a week better and, uh, and be ready for a tough John Carroll team yes sir and you know there's no denying we had a good number of penalties on Friday night. Do you think it was kind of the first game tightness, or do you think it was the pressure of playing base side at base side? Yeah, I don't. I don't know about the pressure, but I think a little bit of playing uh, playing one of your rival teams where all the, all the, all you guys know each other. You know, they know you. There's not many teams. I bet you, you don't know. You can't name any of the guys, and no one of us have had a conversation with John Carroll's players that we're about to play. Yes, sir. Uh, but all you guys can name every player. Who's that, y'all? Who's that? Y'all knew those guys. Yes, so sir. I think that adds to a little bit of the uh, chirpiness and, and such. But we got to do a better job keeping our composure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and eliminate the penalties that are self-inflicted. You may get a holding call. You may get a pass interference, right? You're just playing hard. You may get some, some of those things. You don't want them, but you may get them. But the self-inflicted penalties that we can avoid, that we control, uh, it's a little bit undisciplined, which falls to me on, the, on, the, on, on me and, and, our, and our staff to make sure we instill that and that composure, the ability to play hard, play tough. I like a little chippiness, as, y'all, as you guys yes, know. Sir. But the, you can't cross the line. And so we did that a few times the other night. We overcame it every time. But uh, we know you're talking about over 100 yards and penalties. Um, that, that's, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. The, the hidden yardage, you know, there, a, a part, some of the teams I was on, they did a big study on the hidden yardage, both in the kicking game, right, or the penalties, hidden yardage. And they, they had a, a, an ability to – some kind of algorithm, you know, to say per, per however many yards, it's this many points, you know, or it's this many. And it's like, man, you can't afford to do that in a closer game. It could end up costing you. Yes, sir. You know, now looking ahead to John Carroll – um, you know, there's a lot going on in the background. New stadium, you know, the Archbishop's going to be there. Um, how's the team handling the commotion kind of surrounding the game? And how, how, how have y'all been practicing so far? Yeah, I think the guys are excited. Um, I think they're excited. Home opener, obviously we got a taste of it with Alma Bryant. Uh, but knowing that wasn't a regular season game, it didn't have quite the same feel. Uh, certainly uh, will be uh, great to have Archbishop here and, and, and then and to have, our, you know, our, our community and home fans here. I, I would expect a huge crowd. I know John Carroll is going to do their best. They got a four-hour drive, but I, I imagine they'll have good fan support as well. And uh, it'll be a heck of a challenge. It'll be a heck of a challenge. But I, I, our guys are excited. We're excited. Uh, it's, a, it's an opportunity to, to go 1-0 and this week and get to 2-0. and And then we head into Region 1. So I think it's a, it's a good challenge. It's a really fun opponent to play. Just watching them on tape and then just talking to their coach and also being another Catholic school, you know, another diocese in the yes, state. It, it's, it's a fun opponent because we don't know a lot about them, you know. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reputable opponent. They won nine games last year. And um, – I'm looking forward to the challenge. I, th- I think these are the kind of non-region games you want to play. You know, these are the yes, ones you, you love to play. Last week is one you want to play. Obviously, we finished week 10 at, at UMS. You mm-hmm. love those kind of – so this is uh, it's an exciting week. Yes, sir. You know, now kind of looking to the defensive side of the ball, you know, what can we expect from John Carroll on defense? 
Um, you know, they're, they're not the biggest. Uh, you know, they're not going to be the biggest defense we'll, we'll see or that we've seen, uh, but they, they're fast. They can run. Um, they can run. They're kind of slippery. You know, their ends are going to be standing up. Uh, their linebackers are, are fast guys that like to blitz and pressure, and they play, you know, a, a nice mix of, of zone coverage, kind of a shell coverage, and then, they, and then they play some cover one man where they line up and say, we're going to cover you. So it'll be a little bit of a cat and mouse game uh, with them early. Uh, trying to see what they settle in. What do they think? You know, what? How are they going to approach stopping the run? How are they going to approach stopping Brody or Tucker? Uh, you know, do they have a specific plan, or are they just going to line up and play their defense and and say, "Here we are." So we'll find that out early and uh, respond accordingly. Yes, sir. And you know, it's a non-region game. Do you plan to game plan any differently from a region game? I, I don't. I, I think you. Uh, I think there's certain things you may be smart, you know, uh, things you if, – if there's something you know specifically you want to save or you want to do for a, a region opponent that's coming up soon, right? Neil and Satsuma are coming up soon to scam you. And you're like, man, I want to hang on to that, then maybe. But other than that, no, because I think I think the, the shoot you throw it all on tape and go right. We'll we'll yes, keep sir. building off of that. We'll respond off of that. You still got to line up and play. But I, I I just never have believed as a player and as a coach that you say ah we'll hang on to that when a game really matters. Well, they all matter. They all matter. Yes, so sir. we we're on, we're gonna we're gonna put it all out there on the line each week. It's only fair to you guys. You know, to you only get ten. Yes, so uh, we want to we want to uh, cut it loose each week and do what we think is the best to win. No, we're not always right, but we're going to do whatever we think is the best. It gives us the best chance to win that game, not thinking about uh, what's ahead. And, you know, Coach, looking towards injuries and health, you know, how is the health of the team out of the first game? Did anyone lose practice time or will anyone have to sit out this week against John Carroll? Uh, we've had a few. We've had a few. A uh, few injuries. Um, obviously, you know Noah wasn't out there last week. He's working hard to get back. Uh, you still, kind of see him as, as as questionable right now. Um, you know, we had a few things here and there, but all, all in all, guys are pushing to get back on the field, uh, pushing to get better. It, it, we, hopefully, we avoided anything catastrophic in in the Bayside game, but certainly dealing with some bumps and bruises. But um, Hopefully we can be as close to full strength. You know, really the first game of the year is about the only game of the year you'll ever be where you hope you're, you're full strength. I'm talking as a player, each individual player goes, man, I feel good. Yes, and then from then on, you're never going to be 100% again uh, the rest of the year. <laughs> Even if you don't have any major injuries, you're not, uh, you're not uh, 100% just due to the natural you know, wear and tear of being out in the field. Yes, sir. Um, you know, thank you for joining us. Uh, good luck and safe play this week against John Carroll. Uh, this has been Mitchell Swanson and Coach Rivers from the Wild Carter Network. St. Michael, defend us.